Well, I uh, grew up in Revere, Massachusetts at 21 North Avenue, and uh, I actually lived in the middle floor of uh, a three-floor building. Uh, my grandmother and grandfather and a couple of their kids lived on the bottom floor, and a couple of their kids lived on the top floor, and my father, mother, and I lived in the middle floor. So I was uh, very much uh, around people most of my life. I was an only child, but I was never brought up as an only child. I, I was thought of as being the last son in the group of nine kids that my grandmother had. So, so it was a big family. Every Sunday was a uh, party uh, in terms of food, because that's what it was. Food was love in an Italian family, and uh, we ate a lot. <laughs> My father came from Naples, Italy in 1915. He was 17 years old. He, uh, he claimed that the first couple of weeks he actually lived in doorways in Boston because uh, he couldn't find a place to play, uh, eat and sleep. And so he had to get a job. He, uh, he was looking for a job. He finally got one and he went, went from there. He worked at the Necco Wafer factory in, uh, in Somerville. That's where it is. And, uh, then went on to become a tailor and he worked in a tailor shop which is on Forsyth Street which was one block away from this building so it was uh, it's pretty ironic the way it turned out uh, I never got to visit him in his factory he never wanted me to go inside so I don't know what it looked like inside I think he was trying to protect me but uh, it was good every once in a while we'd meet for lunch in his car and, uh, and that's how we went from there. Well, I think the biggest inspiration was my father. He was, he's always been my hero. He was a hard worker. He, uh, he uh, was very studious. He read a lot. He read a lot of poetry. He's always, uh, also a, uh, a, a art, art appreciator in, in that he, he had poems and artwork and he loved opera. He got me interested in opera. I wish I got my kids interested in opera because uh, I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, he, uh, he kept me on the right line without being uh, too obtuse. So I think that uh, uh, that fine touch is hard to do. I know I have five kids. And I was really interested in science. I loved science when I was in high school. In fact, I have a uh, scholarship dedicated to one of my science teachers from high school at, at Revere High, Peter Sarasoli. And then uh, the reason why I, I, Northeastern was the only school you could go to. If you came from a blue collar town, this was practically the only school you could go to, and it was, you know, it was a fine engineering school. So I, I hit I hit the jackpot by having both of those things. And uh, so uh, my when I told my father to become an engineer, he was very disappointed he, because he wanted me to be a businessman and start a business. He tried to drill that through me all my life. And so he let up on me when one of my uncles told him, listen, there's engineers start businesses too. So from then on, he was okay with engineering. Co-op is, is key. Uh, you're able to, I was, my father paid for my first two tuition bills, which were $300 each per term. And I paid from there on in. They did supply me room and board because I commuted with a Volkswagen uh, every day to school. That's why we used to call it at the time the factory, but it was a wonderful factory. Uh, it was uh, a good education and, uh, and I think co-op was key as far as later in life where you learn, it, where you meld uh, knowledge with, with practical experience. I don't know how you get something better than that. I got a phone call from Dick Egan uh, saying 
I'd like to meet at the Marriott in Newton. That's where all good businesses meet. Central location. We met uh, one night and uh, he said, listen, you've been in a few companies, I've been in a few companies, and some have gone out of business. Let's start our own company, and if it goes out of business, it will be our fault, <laughs> instead of somebody else's. So, uh, and at the time, I was thinking of, of starting a, a rep company, which is a sales organization company for high-tech equipment at the time, and, uh, and that's along the lines he was thinking. So we had kind of uh, an agreement on what we were going to do. Uh, we didn't have any lines yet, so we had to go out and, and get them. And, and Dick took a trip out in the West Coast and talked to some of the people he knew. And I, I had a few under my uh, belt where you know I could pull out and see if we could do for something in the future. And uh, so it all came together. But the first one we got was a furniture company that sold furniture for computer systems. So. Vic used to use that. It was a wonderful thing that EMC started selling furniture to people. That's how we started. And so it was a great story. Uh, as far as why I'm doing it, it's because I think you have to give back. Uh, I give back in two areas, health and education and I work with Riviera High, I give scholarships there, and I work with Northeastern, and I enjoy Northeastern, I enjoy doing it. So, you know, what starts off as an obligation turns out to be an enjoyment, so it's uh, not hard to do. I had a, a, a talk with Richard Friedland a, a while ago, and I sat down and I said, you know, this, this university is getting so popular and so good, people like me can't come here anymore. And of course, that's, you've heard that a thousand times since then. And so, you know, coming up with the Torch Scholarship was a perfect solution for that. I mean, his answer was correct, too. He said, well, you didn't have University of Massachusetts as popular or as, uh, as uh, you know, accessible in that day for, for, for blue-collar workers. So. Uh, so the answer partially to that was, to everybody's question, not just mine, the same question, was the Torch Scholarship, which is, I think is a great thing. And to hear the story about the people, and then you say, wow, he didn't make it, and he didn't make it, and then you start feeling badly about it, because you can only take so many in, and there's so many uh, applicants. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I went to the uh, graduation a couple of months ago, and it was spectacular. Those kids are the greatest kids in the world. I mean, you know, I, I like to take down all their names and say, watch these names in the future, because they're going to make it. I, I said that in, in the groundbreaking speech, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house when I said it. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty touching that you know, you could build a building where your father used to work in a factory and, and see that kind of a step in one generation. It was wonderful, and it, it was his fault. I mean, his, his drive, his coaching, and his, just his general being that, that brought me. I was impressed with my first turn. Of course, it was it bowled me over when I saw it in person. But I'll tell you when I really was bowled over when I saw it at night, all lit up against the the uh, Boston background. That was just amazing to me. That was that's when it was really pretty. It's a pretty building as it is, but that kind of lighting and background was spectacular. When I was coming here, I never got lost. When I come here now, I get lost. So that, that's really kind of an overview of what I think the difference is. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's a true story. <laughs> it's a wonderful place. I've taken, I've got pictures on my iPhone right now of various parts of Northeast and that show how pretty it is. I want to show it to people. I show them, uh, you know, the flowers in the back and the, the ball and the, and the various sculptures. I mean, 
I went through it one time. I think it was after graduation day. I, I went through here and just made. I must. I must have about uh, 20, 30 pictures of my iPhone about Northeastern. That, that's what I think of the difference. I just think that the the progress that I've seen through my years has just been uh, spectacular. Uh, it would take a, a book to describe the type of progress that was made here through all its presidents and I'm really happy to see that this president can take it at another level which I thought was impossible and he's doing it.